and welcome to Coding Corner, a segment where we teach you some new tricks in an easy to use programming tool called Scratch. I'm Goose. I'm Julian. Thanks for joining us again, Julian. Pleasure to be here, Goose. Scratch is a completely free program to use and there's a copy of all our lesson notes on the Good Game Spawn Point website. Now, Julian, what will we cover in today's lesson? Let's start with some basic movement. We'll make a program that will make clones of a ball shoot across the screen. Oh, I see. So we could use these in a puzzle game or, or maybe a golf game. Oh, the concept of velocity has so many applications. To start, let's make a new project. Then load a sprite to represent your golf ball. Under scripts, go to the orange data tab and create two new variables, power and velocity. Now for the scripting. Go to events and drag across a when green flag clicked block. Then from motion, add a go to x y block and change their values to zero. This will send your golf ball to the center of the screen when you start the program. Below that, add a set variable to blank block from data and set the drop down to power and type 25 in the box. Go to control and add a forever loop below that. From motion, insert a point towards block and set the drop down to mouse pointer. Go to control and start a fresh stack. This time with a when I start as a clone block. Go to data and add two set blank to blank blocks. Set the drop down of the first to power and the drop down of the second to velocity. Drag power into the variable slots of both. Select the motion tab and add a point towards block. Set the drop down to mouse pointer. From control, add a repeat until loop. For the until clause, add a less than block from operators. For the left side, drag the velocity value block from data. For the right side, type in 0.1. Inside the repeat until loop, add a move blank steps block from motion. Go to data and set the variable to velocity. While still in data, add a set blank to blank block. Set the drop down to velocity and from operators, drag a multiplication oval into the variable. Go back to data and drag velocity into the left side and type 0.9 into the right side. Go to control and insert an if then clause below that. Go to sensing and insert a touching hexagon. Set the drop down to edge. Go back to control and insert a delete this clone block inside the if then loop. Then add another delete this clone block after the repeat until loop. For our third and final stack, we'll need another when green flag clicked block from events. Go to control and add a forever loop below that. Inside the forever loop, add an if then clause. From sensing, drag a mouse down hexagon into the variable slot. Inside the if then, add a create clone of blank block from control. Set the drop down to myself. Below that, add a wait until blank block. From operators, drag a not hexagon into the slot. And from sensing, drag a mouse down hexagon into the not hexagon. The program is now complete. Great, but Julian, what does all that code actually do? The first stack we made ensured the sprite is always facing the mouse, so that when it shoots out clones, they'll always try and hit that arrow. The second stack makes the clone ball slow down as they move and orders them to disappear when they get too slow or hit the edge of the window. The third stack creates a clone every time you click the mouse. Amazing, well let's give it a go. It works, look at them go. I see. By setting it so objects gradually slow down, it makes them seem more realistic. This sort of code would be perfect in a sports game. Remember, these are just the basics. If you'd like more of a challenge, why not try making your own golf game? Well, I think we're off to a pretty good start, Julian. Remember, Spawnlings, all the lesson notes are on the website here. But until then, goose out. Julian out.